Oh, sorry, didn't see you there. We're just working on uh, brown sugar right here. Guys, today's a big day. It is double entry day, the first double entry day of the brown sugar giveaway. Double entry. Double entry, and guys, guess what? The t-shirt club going on right now. You got until the 25th to get this badass Salty John shirt. Also, double entry, so that's four times entries on that shirt. Can you believe it? Four times entry, t-shirt club, get it for the 25th, and we got the brand new merchandise. Look at that thing. Four times entry, that's at least a 200% and 53,000 times better chance of winning. I'm not good at math because we're no prepping now. Also, we got a brand new LS Nasty sticker. You guys go to lsnasty.com. First link in the description. Where's below. it at? It's right here. First, oh, it's up here? It's right no, here. No, the link's down here. Link's down here. Sticker's right here. First, first link in the description. <laughs> 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 First link in the description below. Everything on the store, double entries, t-shirt clubs, four times entry, anything in the past collections, double entry on top of the double entry. So talking about four times entries on the store right now to get entered to win this thousand horsepower beast. You can't win it if you're not entered. We're going to win a hundred thousand dollars in this thing. Dig or die. See you guys out there. Enjoy today's video. Feel sorry for anybody else going. You like gripping dingers and popping wheelies? Go to lsnatch.com. We're giving away this thousand horsepower turbo LSD body. Every dollar you spend is an entry to win. Ninety-four millimeter turbo. Forged LS Holly EFI Power Glide Transmission. This thing is bad to the bone and can be yours if you go over to lsnasty.com. Four seats and a big ass trunk for all your friends. This thing's a true muffin cat peeler. It is the highest horsepower car we have ever given away. Double bead lock, check. Forged LS, check. Thousand horsepower, oh yeah. QA1 suspension, you bet. You can take this thing, put all your friends in it, go cruise around because it is a true, real deal street car. Or you go to the track and bust them out. Go to lsnasty.com, check out all of our brand new merchandise. We got hats, shirts, stickers, socks, key tags, posters, you name it, we got it. And every dollar you spend is an entry to win. lsnasty.com or the first link in the description below. Go and get entered. I don't know what my I don't know what my internet persona for this one's gonna be. sevens in it right now they're gapped to like 30 thousand yeah stock coals need to be like 15 so we got some eights going in it 
a little bit colder plug, a little bit, I think more appropriately fitted for the power we're trying to make. Should run a whole lot better, that's our plan. Yeah. But it ain't really bad, I mean, we've made some... The plugs don't look bad either, I mean, they're just like, these are old as shit. Yeah, they've been driven around, you know, who knows how long. And I will say, whoever wins this, great plug accessibility. Honestly, the biggest pain in the ass is just the, the header wrap, which you can easily work around. But there's nothing more annoying than changing plugs when they're not accessible. So uh, easy access to spark plugs is a huge perk. This is a perfect car for a beginner to like learn how to hot rod. Yeah. Or for an experienced hot rod to continue hot rod. Or if you just need a daily driver. I don't know if this is like my number one pick to say, hey, you daily driver, but it can be Oh, this thing can haul weight too, so if you want to get into hot shot hauling. Yeah. yeah. Sticking the last plugs in there, our toothless hero, just tighten them down. Matt, they didn't have the plugs we needed. Yeah, so John got a the B8 EFS. Um, so in NGK's, the like a BR is a resistor plug. Usually, you always want to try to run a resistor plug. Um, some older like CDI carburetor stuff, they don't care. But anything EFI, Terminator, Mega Squirt stuff like that, um, the resistor plug will remove a lot of the noise interference, EMI. But would that cause just like a misfire? It can. It can cause it to break up a higher RPM and stuff. Certain ECUs are more susceptible than others. Like a Dominator is pretty good noise shielding, so you don't have that. Terminator doesn't have quite as much noise shielding. Like uh, Mega Squirt ECUs are very susceptible to noise. Um, but the problem is, is like the they don't really make a resistor plug in a cold heat range. So like fine, there's some eights that you can get. They don't have it like they, they make them but the problem is every every single plug is uh that has a resistor that's the right heat range has a 13 16 head won't go on any of these so what i used to do is i have a thing that i made in my press and it's like you stick a plug in there and then you press it down and it's like a um die that presses over top of it turns it into a 5 8 head so you can run like a nine or a ten resistor plug for uh, some stuff like import stuff, like four cylinder stuff, have to do that with like Hondas. Stupid Hondas. But yeah, so they didn't have sevens. I don't have sevens because everything I got to 10 or 11, which is like ice cold. Now, what, what would happen? Tell the people if you put a 10 or 11 in this. Uh, I mean, it's got to be hot enough to burn off any kind of deposits, but the thing is about E85, it runs pretty clean, so you might be okay, but. Now, if you had a gasoline car. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't last very long. Explain the heat ranges real quick to someone who doesn't know. They don't know what we're talking about. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, 11. So like, uh, the... Stock LS is like a 5. Yeah. TR5, TR55, um, TR6s. So, the higher the number, the colder the plug is. And when we say the colder the plug, the... The tip of the plug, like a, a 5, this tip will be very hot. So like if you run it, what can happen is the thing's turned into just a giant glowing electrode and it'll cause it to detonate uh, just from the heat on the plug. So you go with a six, it cools the plug down seven, cools the plug down eight, cools the plug down. The more power you make, the colder the plug needs to be. If you try to run some TR5s in this, it'd probably blow up just because this thing would turn into essentially a glow plug. It would be, this is what would be igniting the charge. When it sprayed the fuel in there, this thing would just light it off and it could have 60, 70, 100 degrees of ignition time. And 100 degrees. Detonation, and that's what's going to kill motors, just pre-ignition detonation. So get your right plugs in there, get them gapped right. We tightened up the gap from about 25 to 15. Hopefully that will keep it from breaking up. Honestly, at that kind of boost, that gap was way too large. Yeah, we're in like the 20 pound range, 22 pound range, uh, E85. Uh, you know, it, it needs to have a, a pretty tight gap. So we're going to go up there, try it again, and uh, I think we're going to put some more weight back in it and see if we can get to go down without breaking up and make a full pull.
We're getting somewhere. We're hunting. We, yeah, uh, uh, uh. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. It's impressive. It pulled a wheelie. I felt it. Oh crap, sugar. God dang. Who do you think I am? I am.
Oh, two seconds. Zip, zip, welder out down. You just need to put a bead roll on it. You realize it's all welding the turbo, right? Just right. bead roll it and that's good. The whole entire pipe is welded to the turbo. This? Yes. Oh, is it really? Look at it. I thought there was a bead on the turbo. Oh, it's got a V-band. Oh, I need to put another V-band oh, down, down there. there. Yeah. Oh. I just got to put another V-band down there. I thought it was welded. I was like, we got to take no, a whole I need to make. I need to make a piece this big. That big. Out of aluminum. With a V-band on one side. With V-band on... Really, you need a V-band on one side. No, two sides. I'm not taking it off the turbo. Way too much work. I'll put a bead band there. And, yeah, you know what? Honestly, I'll just bead roll that piece and cram it in there. Fuck bead roll that piece. It'll yeah. be good. Maybe we'll make a new piece that doesn't take two couplers. Maybe just one coupler. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 And if you do that, you got no room to flex so it can't fall out. Yeah. Like, it'll just have that coupler there and that coupler here. That one in the middle. No, it, well, I have a coupler up here. It's that bead band and one well, coupler no, on the... I don't want to have to take that piece, that piece off. I want to see, like, there's no way you can weld it all on the car. Oh yeah, you just tack it all up on the car, and then well, you stick the coupler in there and roll it up the turbo with the V-Man on it. Oh, you tack it on the coupler on the top of it? No, no, no. You cut that off, build it on the car right there, you have the coupler, and then you build it towards like that, and take the V-Man towards it. So last time we went building a boost, I had some tables. I didn't think I messed anything up, but it wouldn't spool, so turns out in the burnout knocked the charge pipe off. So we're gonna fix that tonight. Um weld a new thing on there. So got all that fixed up. We're going back up here, make another hit. Um a little dark out here in the back. In the darkness. In the darkness. I feel like Batman. Um so we're gonna be uh, making this hit, and I don't know how many more hits because we can go out here and just. They they said they're just gonna test until everybody gets tired. So I don't know. It could be <laughs> three or four o'clock in the morning. But uh, I'm really glad we came out here. We were almost gonna go untested, but we figured out a lot of problems, and we've gotten a lot of tuning and uh, everything we've been doing. We've been making really good strides and figuring out what we need to fix and problems and stuff. I mean, we could have went to dig or die and then first round pop the cupper off, and then there we go, just out. So first round ducks. Not no more. Hopefully. Global warming is a real thing.
on playoff. Yeah. Something flew off. Oh my! Well, it looks like we got some repairs to make tonight. Fuck! God bless. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Damn you, Charger! Bullshit! Oh, it's fucked. <laughs> oh my god. The whole pipe. The whole pipe blew off. Shit. <laughs> yeah, it's salty John fabrication. It's gonna have to be some. Shop. All right, so if you guys saw the uh, intercooler pipe deleted itself, um, so that kind of cut our night short. But we got shout out to our Miller welders at Nasty Racing where we could just weld that sucker up in no time. Bead roll it, weld it. Oh, we're gonna do it right. So we're gonna go back to the shop. It's kind of good, you know. Now we can just go back and have a semi late night. Hopefully, do you done by like what 4 a.m. Oh no. Well, with me getting done with my big block twin turbo kit, it might be a little bit later than that. All right, looks like we're going to be hogging the welder because I'm, <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to be using it to fix brown Miller, sugar. we need another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so, what do you think? Um, I mean, no prep wise, uh, I think our best outing, we did pretty good with Boomhauer. It's funny, all the cars that we give away, we run no prep stuff with. Boomhauer was good for what it was for like the street car class. This one here sits the same as Boomhauer as far as a street car, but... Let's be uh, honest, just about any type of radio racing is just too expensive and competitive. Like, I mean, yeah, it, oh, dude, none of these cars that... Uh, oh. None of these cars... The baddest no prep cars would be bottom of the barrel radio cars. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just... It's honestly, it's just two different worlds, and it's like, that's okay. Like, I pick on the no prep guys because you're an easy target to pick on and you guys get sensitive. Like, so I'm like, oh, no prep. You guys are a bunch of rednecks. Everyone's like, oh, we're not rednecks. And I'm just like, bro, it's a joke. Settle down. Yeah. Um, I mean, look at David's neck. That thing's bright red. Turn around. We can't see your neck from the front. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, it feels good. The car drives good. It's got a ton of power on tap. And, like, we are, like, dipping our toe in the water on power. Oh, yeah. No, um, it could be. Everyone was like, oh, you know, you, you guys can't do a burnout. Well, we weren't really trying to do a big burnout at the shop. Here, as you guys can see, the car does burnouts like crazy. Uh, and the way the boost controller works, for those of you guys that are wanting to win this car but don't understand how the turbo stuff works, is your boost controller is pretty much in direct control of how your wastegate works. So you put more dome pressure on it, you hit the up arrow more, it keeps it shut, making the turbo spin faster, so more boost. So you are able to adjust the power. That's why turbo cars are so great from you know, if it makes 600 on wastegate on like eight pounds to you can just pin the gate shut and make 30 pounds and make a thousand horsepower. Yeah, with CO2, you can double, you know, it's a lot more precise control. So if you got a race car, CO2 is the way to go. And just, just for a note, we're, this has got a super lazy, like in the note or in the radial stuff, we usually have like all the boost in it in one second or maybe like 1.5 seconds. And we're seconds. literally trying to go as fast as humanly possible. Yeah. The only thing stopping us is if it's going to wheelie or if we're going to break traction. Yeah, and then this car, 
uh, we have a super lazy ramp. It starts off, it goes to like 10 pounds. We're leaving on six pounds of boost. So like, it's not like we're leaving on a ton of power and it goes out there and then it's got a ramp that's like six seconds long. And we're only running 18 pounds of dome. Like, they make a 20 pounds of boost, which is nothing. I mean, these things. No, this thing's on to one still. So we could probably make, you know, you could run this thing 30, 40 pounds of dome and really fly yeah, with it. Yeah. The, the rule of thumb is you're not making power until you're doubling your boost with dome. So 30 pounds of boost, 60 pounds of dome, that's when you're starting, that's when you're making steam. So for us to be running, you know, 18 pounds of boost, maybe, oh, it's we're not even one to one yet. I mean, the, the potential. But what's so crazy about it is, you know, other than the boot, coming off of it um the car is it's it's 80 shit box but it's well built i mean it's got a bunch of really good parts and to come out here and make as many passes as we did all we did was put a fan on it i think that's pretty cool and fix, we're gonna fix the boots that's not an issue but I mean, yeah. look at this thing would you just look at it i mean just look at dude, it that thing's so gangster now here's the real deal though if you win this right if you win this you can take it out to the street and mess a lot of people up Oh, if yeah. you're in the street race. Yeah, this so this kind of no prep. There's a lot of different no preps. Like, I've been on the street and, and gone. This, this, guy, this guy's made 30 test hits right there. Into the trailer. That's what I'm seeing, yeah. Brakes fail. <laughs> Load it up. Okay, they're saying go right to the start line. Just take it right out there. So this... The, the, the surfaces the, that we're running on are trash. Yeah, the Carolina and the back of the track stuff is totally different than a lot. Like the street outlaws, no prep, or any kind of stuff in the street. I've been on the street and it's been 10 times better than any of this no prep out here. So, you know, it, it's this thing could, in the street could really go fast. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it, it's been fast at the track. So, uh, you guys can win it. LSNasty.com. Go down, get your entries to win. Uh, you'd be crazy not to. Things a hot rod. So, definitely fastest car I've ever given away. Fastest car I've ever given away. Highest horsepower car I've ever given away. The biggest turbo. Best parts. Best parts. Aftermarket case glide. Forged six liter. 94 millimeter turbo. Uh, strange 12 bolt in it. It's got a new three and a half inch fleet where I drive shaft. 1350 yokes. Uh, it's got a cage in it. It's got a frame notch. A Holly EFI. QA1. QA1 suspension. Brown and Miller hoses and lines. I mean, let's just. I, I, I gotta call it. We, it's too nice to give away. No, no, we just can't do it. All right. Just kidding. All, All right, right. We'll load it up and uh, work on it, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.